Okay, uh, we're not gonna do a discussion, we're gonna just do a regular lecture today. And uh, I wanna talk to you about how to create a strong mind. And quite frankly, it came to me, occurred to me when I was at uh, Golden Gloves and watching some of the, uh, the people win and lose and some people, uh, young people in the crowd. Um, this generation, and I don't mean specifically just you guys, uh, it, it's a lot of people in this generation uh, quit as soon as somebody says something negative to them or things get hard. Yes or no? It, it's absolutely true. Um, we, we're filled to the brim with, with so, soft and weak people. Uh, filled to the brim of it. What's that talking going on? So anyway, um, we've got to find a way to strengthen our resolve. We've got to find a way to strengthen the mind and forge our soul swords. We can't keep going on like this and where, where the slightest little pressure we crumble. It's become ridiculous. So just to let you know what happened at the Golden Gloves event, as I know some of you are interested in, my son won the first round, second round was a tie. Uh, I was leaning a little more towards him than the other guy, but I think it was a tie. Third round, he lost the third round, and the guy won on points. Now, there was something that my son said that inspired this lecture, and I, I was anticipating him being pretty upset about the loss. And he didn't, instead he said, you know what, today's a good day to lose. And I said, oh, that's an interesting thing to say. There's an old samurai saying that goes, today's a good day to die. And he pulled that out, today's a good day to lose. He said, only thing this is gonna do is make me better, I'm gonna train harder, I'm gonna learn from this, and I'm gonna come back stronger. That's a unique mindset to have, especially considering I'm watching some of the other people lose, and they're crying, they're, they're having little mini temper tantrums. Um, some people just have full-on meltdowns. Uh, people in the crowd. Uh, so many of the young people were disrespectful, rude. Um, little mini gangsters happening inside there. Um, entitled. Entitled little brats, if you ask me. And I consider it weak. I consider it pathetic. And I really have no tolerance for it. What I, have to, what I want to see happen in the future is strong people. People that will take uh, something like a loss and go, it is what it is. I'm going to learn from it. Today's a good day to lose. How do we get there? How do we get there? What's it going to take for everyone to be resolved, to work on their constitution? To work on their soul sword. It's going to take discipline. 100% discipline. Discipline is the ability to do what's needed to be done even when you don't feel like doing it. So you had a bad day. Okay, good. Do what you have to do anyway. So you get pissed off because somebody says something to you. That's okay, good. Do what you have to do anyway. Show up anyway. So you're not feeling your best. Okay, good. Show up anyway. You're feeling sick. Okay, I get it. Show up anyway if you can. Do it. Nike has a great, great saying, Nike. Just do it. Just do it. Don't be entitled. Don't feel like, the wor like this world owes you something. I got news for you. The world owes you nothing. Nada, not one single thing, not one iota. I was talking to somebody today and they were telling me about how they had a full on meltdown because they didn't get something on time. And I just shook my head and said, uh, well, that's pathetic. <laughs> you didn't get something when you wanted it, so you had a full meltdown? That's pathetic. 
That makes me sick. I, yeah, you can call me an elitist if you want to, because honestly, I probably am. Weakness makes me sick. You don't get what you want, so you throw a fit. Does that sound like someone you know? I know, I know several people like that. I'm ashamed to say. It doesn't sound, does it sound like you? Why do you feel like you're entitled? I love the fact that you hold yourself accountable. What can you do to, 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 to fix it? Discipline. Discipline. You know what else you can do is have a purpose. Have a purpose in your life. The reason why you get up in the morning. The reason why you show up. If a person doesn't have a purpose, they're, they're going to have a hard time showing up. They're good. They'd rather play video games or be on their phone or, or do nonsense stuff. I've seen kids spend hours down the TikTok rabbit hole, just watching TikTok, going down and doing Snapchat. And not one of them is going to be a TikTok developer. Not one of them is going to work for Snapchat. They're not going to do any of that. So what they're essentially doing is wasting their time. Wasting their time when they could be doing something productive towards something they want to accomplish in their life. Doesn't that make sense? You're only here for this amount of time. It's such a small amount. What do we live the average to, to be? Like 80? 74. 74. 74, holy crap, I'm almost, I'm almost there. 74, and you're gonna spend some of your time doing useless things instead of time working at your purpose. Yeah, if you don't have a purpose, you're gonna feel like, why does it matter? You're gonna feel like that. Do you feel like you have a purpose? We have to find it. And I got great news about a purpose. It, your purpose can change. It, some of the advice my, my biological father gave me at one point was, I, he asked me what I wanted to do. I said, I wanna be a musician and I wanna be a martial artist, but I didn't know which one to do. And he said, why can't you do both? I said, well, you can't really do both. You can't really be like a rock star guy and be a, a wise, you know, martial arts sage guy at the same time. And he said, why not? And it never occurred to me, I could do whatever I wanted to. I could do both at the same time. So your purpose can change. Your purpose may be to be a plumber right now. And you might become a plumber and do the plumber for five, 10 years, and then go, you know what? I'd rather be an electrician. Awesome, go do that. Life's too short to not do that. You're not married to your purpose. You can change. So find something to make it your purpose. Why do you get up in the morning in the first place? You know how blessed you are to be a human being. I've told you the statistics. You know it's like being in the ocean, being a turtle, swimming around in the ocean with one breath of air, and somewhere in the ocean you pop up and your head just happened to be in the center of an intertube. That is the statistics of being a human being. You could have been born anything else. You could have been born as pond scum. <laughs> wait, wait, you said the sticker had to be 
be the center of what? An inner tube. Oh, what's that? A floating, a floating inner tube. Oh, 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 like one of the donut things that people use in like water parks and stuff? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's the, that, that statistically is about like being born a human being. So it's a crime against yourself not to try to find your purpose. We must find it. And then when you find it, guys, tunnel vision. Absolute, 100% focused tunnel vision. Don't allow anything, and I mean anything, to deter you off your goal. I would rather die than not do what I'm put here on this earth to do. I cannot imagine spending one day not doing what I love to do. In fact, I hate it when I get sick. If I get sick, oh, that, that pisses me off because that means I got to stay in bed and not do what I was put here to do. Nothing pisses me off more than having to stay home and do nothing. You can ask my wife. She loves to relax. I don't want to relax. She loves to sit around and relax. And not, nothing wrong with that. But it's not for me. Because that takes me off my purpose. That's wasting my time. I've only got, what, average of 74 years? I don't want to sit around. Are you crazy? Sit around. Some people would sit around. They, they just love to sit around and eat and get drunk. I don't got time for that kind of bull. I don't got time for that. 74 years? I'm almost there. I cannot waste any time. You shouldn't want to waste any time. So it drives me insane when I see people looking at TikTok all day long. Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram. All of these things. Waste of your bloody time. It's a crime. So you need to have tunnel vision when it comes to your purpose. And don't let anyone or anything or anybody ever deter, deter you. They may say that you're crazy for doing it. Good. Use it as fuel. They may say that you'll never make it. Even better. Prove them wrong. You may, they may say that there's a plenty of other better careers out there. Because, heck, you might want to be a car detailer. And someone's like, no, you need to be a lawyer. Let them think they, whatever they want to. If you want to be a car de detailer and that's your passion, by God, go do it. You must find this purpose. You must find this discipline. Otherwise, you're going to be like these entitled little brats. And I'm not trying to be offensive or hurt anyone's feelings. But it's pathetic. Don't be pathetic. Be like a fighter, like a warrior. Someone who shows up and says, you know what, today is a good day to lose. Tomorrow, I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna start again. Tomorrow, nah, screw the tomorrow. I'm gonna do it right now. Oh, I'm beat up but I'm gonna start right now. So when my son said that to me, I was very proud because I didn't tell him about the samurai, it's a good day to die. He came up with that on his own. And immediately, as beat up as he was, slight concussion, what did I find him doing? Shadow boxing. Shadow boxing. He didn't want to wait. He wanted to start improving right away. 
When he wasn't doing that, he was reading David Goggins. Not wasting time. Why can't you do it? You can. There's no difference between you and him. No difference between you and me. I'm not special. I'm driven. Yes, I'm driven. And I get what I want because I work damn hard for it. That's the only difference. We're all human beings. We breathe the same air, look at the same moon, breathe, uh, drink the same from the same water source, have the same problems. Don't make no mistake that I, that, that I don't have problems. Of course I have problems. I'm a human. But I'm driven. I have a purpose. So how can we start accomplishing our purpose? One is smart goals. We need a specific, well-defined goal to accomplish. A specific, well-defined goal to accomplish. If you don't get specific, like for example, I was telling them this morning when we were talking about purpose and drive and I said don't worry you can change your purpose and drive and I said I remember when I was in massage school and they stopped and said massage school like that's right massage school I went to massage school and they said you've done everything I said I've lived a long time and I remember in massage school they had us draw out blueprints for the perfect business we wanted to go. Now they were thinking massage. I was thinking much bigger. And I basically drew out this dojo. I had the dojo floor, I had a meditation room, I had a massage room, which I have a massage table here. Um, I had a little apartment, I had a recording studio, I had a, a shop. I basically drew this dojo some 30 years ago. I knew, man. I knew. All it takes is hard work. Consistently working. Consistently driving. Consistently going for it. Consistently failing. Consistently losing. Consistently saying, today's a good day to lose. Tomorrow, I'm going to win. Today, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn from my mistakes. We need measurable goals. Something with a specific criteria that measures your progress towards the accomplished goal. It needs to be measurable. We need to figure out what are we doing wrong? We don't need to just say, well, I'm going to learn from this and then not learn. We actually, you know, when someone punches us with a, with a left hook, we need to know how to weave, bob and weave. Or we need to know how to block. We need to go back and learn. We need to take it back to the drawing board and figure it out. We go, I want to be a car detailer, but I forgot to get the soap. <laughs> Next time, we'll skip the soap. We need to figure it out measurable goals the goal needs to be achievable this is why i'm an advocate of blackhawks right pocket list and left pocket list now i know these days we don't use paper for anything you use the the cell phones the cellular phones and the the cloud and all the other fancy dancy stuff you guys got these days but i used the left pocket list and the right pocket list if you've read my book you know exactly what it is the right pocket list is all the things you're going to do today. They're achievable, small, specific, and measurable goals. 
where you can go through them each as you're going through your day and check them off. The left pocket list is your main goal. That's your purpose. That's your drive. Mine, be a musician, be a martial artist. Have a dojo, have a records out, have, this was my stuff. What can I do today to help me achieve that? It could be something as simple as reading a book on the subject. You may want to be a filmmaker, read a book. You may want to be a mechanic, read everything you can about being a mechanic. Learn how to be a mechanic, learn how to be a business owner, learn how to do all the things. It doesn't matter what you want to do. You may want to be write books. Learn about it. That could be a goal of yours today. You may be want to be a golf pro. Learn about it. You may want to be a preacher. Go on a mission. Learn about it. Study it. Become obsessed. Finally, we need timely, clearly defined timeline, including starting starting date, a target date, and the purpose, uh, the reason why the, the, the date was created. This is where the right, right pocket list comes in. You're checking it off every time you do one of the mini goals. So, so far, to not be weak-minded, not to be soft. We must be disciplined. We must be focused. We must have specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely goals. And we have to look at problems as an opportunity. Just like my son did, today's a good day to lose, today's a good day to learn would be what I would say. Today's a good day to learn. Every day is a good day to learn. That's right. And when you make mistakes, you're learning. When you're winning, you're winning. <laughs> but when you make mistakes, that's when you learn. One of the best ways to forge your soul sword is through problems. We all have them. But not all of us look at them as opportunities. When you change your perspective on your problems, you will absolutely change the whole entire way you see the world. The facts are problems are there to help us grow and problems in this life is absolutely necessary. Don't sweat the small stuff. There's an amazing book out called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff and Everything Small Things. And you probably could guess what I'm getting ready to say next. Why so serious? Not like we're going to get out of this thing alive anyway. We're not. And that may sound like really depressing, but it's, it's actually great news. <laughs> you imagine how complacent you'd be if you, you, if you were gonna live forever? Man, how, we would be so fat and lazy. We're like, what does it matter? I'm gonna be here forever. No, we're not going to, we're, we're going to die. 74 years, that's the average. That makes, that makes me pucker up a little bit, to be honest with you, because I'm almost there. <laughs> I postulate this question over and over and over again. Why so serious? Don't sweat the small stuff. I would encourage everyone to read that book. Now you might say, think, well, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be on fire with my purpose, but why so serious? I know, it's a dichotomy. It's so, it's so interesting. That would, that's what makes its life so fascinating. We have this dichotomy. It's like, you're on fire with your purpose, but it doesn't really matter. 
because you're going to die. But it does matter. But not really, because you're really quite insignificant in the grand scheme of things. My dojo really doesn't have much significance outside of this universe, outside of this city. But it matters. Customato would tell Mike Tyson, he said, it is imperative that you win. The world depends on it. Well, why do you think that would be? The world depends on you winning the world championship. How many people have you inspired? How many people did it change? How many people did it, did it affect? I could think of, well, Mike Tyson changed the whole world. He even changed the video game market. That's right, Mike Tyson's knockout. Punch out. Punch out, whatever it was called. It was huge. Helped develop the, the video game market. Mike Tyson inspired so many fighters to get back in the ring, get in the ring. Mike Tyson inspired people from the, 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 the ghettos and the hoods to get out of the ghettos and the hoods because that's where he came from. Mike Tyson inspired billions of people, changed the world. So in a way, Customato was right. You win in the world title. It's imperative for the world but it was also super insignificant because mike is going to die custom auto is already dead yeah it's a dichotomy <laughs> so what do we do You live till you die, to your absolute foolish. You make every single day count. We're here on this earth for such a short time. It doesn't make any sense even to waste one second of it. Why would you do that? Why would you waste this beautiful gift? Why would you waste this divine comedy? To think the Joker was right. He said, the life isn't tragic, it's a comedy. And in a way it is. He was also right. You know, he was also right when he said, why so serious? He was right. The Joker's like my favorite, I think. <laughs> I quote him all the time. He's a crazy little maniac that had great ideas. <laughs> why would you spend your time looking at your phone? being on video games or even reading something that's not important or related to what you want out of life. Don't be ridiculous. Don't be ridiculous. Look for opportunities to expand your knowledge and understanding what you're really passionate about. Make each day count. Live each day in authority and strength. Not weak and pathetic. You're better than that. You're stronger than that. You're made for more than that. You're not made to be pathetic. You're made to be strong, a freaking lion, a warrior king, the king of the jungle. You've all heard my pussycat stories, haven't you? None of you have heard my pussycat story? I, I don't think I have. A pussycat. Temperamental. Entitled is all get out. She doesn't eat on time. Meow, 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 meow. But you pick, her, pick up the cat. She scratches you just because she doesn't want pussycat. Still relying on you to feed her, no, but super, super uh, um, um, entitled. Meow, 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 you deserve, uh, I deserve this food. Meow, I'm a pussy cat, look at me. A lot of guys are pussy cats. Not me. I'm the freaking king of the jungle, believe that. 
I eat what I want to eat. I do what I want to do. I am who I want to be. I'm the king of the freaking jungle. I'm not a pussy cat. Never have been a pussy cat. Never will be a pussy cat. I'm the king of the freaking jungle. You can be king of the jungle too. Mentally tough people absolutely do not waste their time feeling sorry for themselves. There's not a day that goes by that I will feel sorry for myself. If I did something wrong, I will own it. If I did something good, I own that too. Mentally strong people absolutely do not give their power away. They're not pussy cats. They're kings of the jungle. They're the mighty king of the jungle. Mentally tough people, they do not shy away from change. Change is the only thing that's absolutely definite in this world. Things will change. Mentally tough people, they do not focus on the things they cannot control. Mentally tough people, they do not worry about pleasing everyone. They don't worry about pleasing anyone. Mentally tough people, they do not fear taking calculated risks. You gotta get in the ring. Mentally tough people, they do not dwell on the past. Healing from the past is not by dwelling in it, it's by living in the present. Mentally tough people, they do not make the same mistakes over and over again. They learn. Mentally tough people, they do not resent other people's success. Heck, I love to see other people succeed. That's synergy. I want to see all of you succeed. Mentally tough people, they do not give up after the first failure. It's a good day to learn. It's a good day to lose. Mentally tough people, they do not fear alone time. In fact, I rather crave it. Mentally tough people, they do not feel the world owes them one damn thing. Because it doesn't. And finally, mentally tough people, they do not expect immediate results. Unfortunately, nowadays we are so used to immediate results. Information right now. Dopamine right now. Real world doesn't happen that way. It's a lot of consistent action. 30 years, 30 years ago, I drew this place. 30 years ago. That's longer than all of you have been alive. And I've made it happen. But that was 30 years ago that I came up with the concept. That has been a long, hard road. You can do it too. There's nothing stopping you but you. Everyone is capable. You just have to get off your ass and kick ass. That's all there is to it.